going to sit in one place, okay? Jenna, oh. better you sit down because you're going to come in front of the screen. We don't have a mic, do we? We do. Inside, which connects there. All right. Brother? Brother. Needs to be a lot closer. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The tape needs to be closer, doesn't it? Should we put it on the card? Uh, we can Is the cord long enough? Can we get it closer? Yeah, we can take it a little long. Oh, it's so far it's soft. Uh, yeah, it's so big. Yeah. I haven't figured it out. You haven't figured it out? I got it figured out. Oh, good. So it's on the website now. The live stream is on.
uh, Imam and executive director, you will also give you an update on how that search is going. Uh, and then we'll open up for questions. And the more questions you have, then we'll stay as long as we need to. But then we won't eat so, so soon. <laughs> so, inshallah, we, we will be available as long as we need to, to answer questions. But also we will, uh, around 8 o'clock, we will step outside and enjoy uh, some food. And Maghrib is, is close to 9 o'clock. So we have a full hour, inshallah, to be outside and enjoy the company and the food, inshallah. All right, so with that, I'm going to introduce, all right, class, we're going to start? All right, so. Brother Basim is not a stranger, he's, he's a, an original RCMR from day one, so. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Hey, isn't it wow. good to be back at RCM? Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Now, I haven't been here in like almost a year and a half. We did a very quick meeting and I had goosebumps, alhamdulillah, from uh, being able to, uh, to to be back personally. So, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ahdihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. As what I had mentioned, I'm here just to take about five minutes to get you up to speed on the search for the executive director of the Imam. Uh, I'm doing this in my role as uh, one of the board members, but also part of a selection committee uh, that, that goes through the process. Uh, I don't know if uh, anybody's going to hold it. Thank you. Uh, so it's a very uh, simple but thorough process. Uh, obviously, we start by publishing a job description. If we don't know what we're looking for, we don't know uh, how to convey that information, uh, we don't know what we're going to end up with. And the second thing is to form a selection committee. This is usually three or four people that are part of what's know what's going on at RCM, and they're tasked basically with uh, doing part of the, the screening of whoever applies. The third step is a very simple step that I believe very strongly in, and it's just thanking anybody and everybody that has applied for the job, saying we got it, we'll get back to you with the next steps. And then we sit down as a selection committee and we compare the, res the resumes that we receive to the actual um, job description. And if there are people that have uh, been told to lower this, okay. Okay, oh sorry, hi people online, assalamu alaikum. Uh, so the, the third step uh, is to acknowledge the receipt of all submissions. The fourth step is to really uh, uh, make sure that the resumes that we receive are meet the basic requirements of what we're looking for. And if they don't, we thank those people and we uh, tell them to, to maybe uh, start to volunteer for RCM, get a little bit more engaged, or try to do something that, uh, that gets them, you know, to keep looking for other opportunities with RCM and uh, So that narrows it down to holding introductory calls with some of the people that do meet the requirements. And this is a very high level call. It's really meant to uh, allow the candidates to ask questions about RCM and allow us to judge whether there's a good match uh, personality-wise, uh, culture-wise, uh, so that we're not wasting their time and we're not wasting uh, the resources at the mosque in terms of pursuing people that are not going to be a good match, regardless of their technical background, regardless of their education, or regardless of things like that, right? Then whoever passes those two is then invited to a more formal interview. This is where you, you hear about the very formal, tell me about the situation, what happens there, have you gone through something like that? This is to address the, the kind of the ability to think on their feet, to understand some of the things that they're going to be facing in terms of uh, leadership uh, questions and things like that. And then whoever passes that step is invited to come in person and meet more people. So it's a very simple process, it's a very straightforward process, but it's also a thorough process because it's a big decision, uh, both for RCM and for that person 
that's going to take on um, that, that responsibility. And eventually, inshallah, we get an agreement where we're talking to this person, he or she as, as the executive director, then can uh, go into negotiations and we offer them, inshallah, the job and then they, they start based on, uh, on where, where they stand. So that's the process in a nutshell. Uh, to let you know exactly where we are today, uh, we have, alhamdulillah, received six applications for the executive director. Um, of those six, uh, only really two were met requirements. And we have had the uh, initial call, the introductory call with both of those candidates. We have invited both of those candidates to come back and do the actual interview, which are actually happening this weekend. I think one happened this morning, and um, we're hoping to be able to schedule the second one very, very quickly. Um, and then we'll see what, where that goes from there. The imam position, as you know, was sort of uh, delayed. We just found out about uh, the, the need to, to hire a new imam. We've already received six very good application, applications. We have actually spoken to all six applicants in this case. All of them met the basic requirements. Uh, we are in the middle right now of reviewing that cultural fit in terms of uh, picking the, the ones that uh, we feel would be the best uh, match for, for our skin. And then inshallah we will be dividing uh, maybe all six of them, maybe just a few of them, to the uh, official interview process. And um, that's it. Uh, we'll, I'll, I'll come back to take questions maybe during the, the Q&A uh, period. So let me turn it over to Rudolf al and then I'll be back in chat. Assalamu alaikum. Um, hopefully you guys can all hear online. I think I saw a couple of notes that or complaining about the muffled sound. So I'll try to speak loudly, um, and I will hurt your ears. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Abdul Samad Hussain. Um, I've been on the board for two and a half years now, alhamdulillah, so thank you guys for putting up with me. But I wanted to share uh, a few important announcements related to the Vision 99 project. Um, my son took off. Oh, there he is. Can you do the slides for me, buddy? Oh, okay. Or just a little, either one. So I just wanted to just kind of recap some of the stuff that we covered at the uh, gala last year. Um, in case you weren't there, just wanted to kind of give you a brief history of where we are today, uh, based on where we started and where we would like to go as far as the Vision 99 project is concerned. Um, as you know, this particular facility, Alhamdulillah, has served us very well. Um, unfortunately, I think the time has come where we've outgrown it, right? You can see the Juma Salahs, we have two of them. Uh, Eid Salahs, I think this year we had three of them. Technically four, but we didn't announce the fourth. But the point that I'm trying to make is that we are now at a tipping point where we do need to start thinking about our youth and our future, right? Um, and I think I met someone today who just moved here from, our, uh, from a different state, and I'm really excited to see that there's still a lot of momentum and a lot of growth organically happening in the uh, Metro, more specifically here in Roswell. So we welcome all the new members as well as the previous members. Um, just a quick recap again. So the board and a select committee got together to start to focus on what can we do for our community. And that was where we coined this phrase, Vision 99, where we wanted to build a new budget and a community center. Community center is important simply because the C in RCM stands for community, right? So we wanted to make sure we had a place where kids can do the things that kids do in a safe and controlled environment. Also, we re recognized we didn't have enough green space. Um, if you notice, it's a asphalt and concrete parking lot all around us, a little unsafe for little kids to run around. And so from all of that, we identified a land lot and we purchased it uh, alhamdulillah, last year, Q4, and as Brother Maher alluded to, um, you can see some of the statistics there. We did receive the zoning favorably, so now, alhamdulillah, the lot has been zoned correctly for us to build a budget on it. Um, on both sides, you can see there's Lebanon Baptist Church, there's the Unitarian uh, Metro Atlanta North Church, 
right across the street from Bolton Academy, Academy of Science and Technology. All that to be said, we're in the right place, inshallah, for us to grow organically here. Um, I think I shared this with you all at the gala, and we may have also talked about this at the previous town hall, but this is just a rough sketch, this initial concept, right? We wanted to present something to not only Roswell City Council, but then to all of you all from the community as well, to kind of envision what it might look like. We don't have any more um, artist renderings or anything like that just yet, but that's what I'm going to talk about in just a second. But you can see there's three main buildings, and I know it's a little hard to read, um, but the, that's what's in the blue, right? And everything in black is basically a parking lot. We've got a basketball court and so on and so forth. Um, but the point that I'm trying to drive home is that we purposely have started with just the footprint and we're gonna inshallah grow it and, and build it from there. Um, again, heavy focus on youth play areas and uh, green space. So, as I mentioned in May, we did reach a milestone, which was to get the, the zoning for us to build a civic property or a masjid. Um, and from there, we quickly transitioned. When I say we, it was the Vision 99 committee. Again, it was made up of several board members, as well as volunteers from the community. And we decided that we needed to kind of create three separate subcommittees that are really gonna focus and hone in on what are the next steps over the next several uh, months and years. And so we built the community outreach and communication team. You can see all the individuals that are volunteering. Uh, the project development team, which is exactly like it sounds. It's all about the architecture, the development of the site, um, the planning that's gonna go into kind of how we're gonna use that space. Do we really need to start off with uh, 20,000 square feet, 30,000 square feet, so on and so forth. All of that is still TBD and, and to be determined, but that's really what the focus is of the project development team. And then we have the funding team, the most important part. How are we going to pay for this? Um, these folks that are volunteering here up on the screen um, are actually going to start really, really putting their heads together to start figuring out how we can not only uh, approach the community, but also outside of the Roswell uh, area. So whether that is a governmental grant, whether that's if we put solar panels on the roof and so on and so forth to save us some money, um, those are the kinds of creative ways that we're going to try to make this a fully sustainable budget and inshallah try to raise funding for the overall Vision 99 project. Um, on this slide, I do want to call out that we are looking for more volunteers. So if you feel uh, excited as I am and you want to join any of these uh, subcommittees, uh, please email vision99 at roswellmudgeon.org. Just drop us your name and phone number and we'll be happy to reach out to you um, to make sure that we can get you involved, even if it's simply to um, provide us with a little bit of um, your professional expertise, whether it's uh, architecture and design, whether it's fundraising, or if it's just simply you're a great PR individual and would like to help build posters. does not matter what level of involvement you have. The point is we want to encourage everyone to volunteer their time and um, experience. Um, next slide, please. For the summer, can you just announce for the people online, it's in the comment section, the email address. Can I what? For the people who are online, the email address is in the comment section. Oh yes, so the email address vision99 at roswellmudgeon.org, uh, we've dropped that into the chat window, so please feel free to copy and email us. Um, this particular slide, again, I shared this with you all at the gala, and it was a little hard to read, and it hasn't gotten any better, it's still hard to read, but the point that I'm trying to illustrate here is that there's a lot of touch points and a lot of milestones that we have to reach over the next several months and years. Um, the most important thing is you can see the top half where we've completed a lot of the goals and initiatives that we set out with. And from there, we are now looking at the bottom half. And that um, programming and building, that's going to take a lot of time. And we're smack dab at the beginning of it right now, where we are not only hosting this town hall to kind of help everyone understand where we are in the process, but then also start talking about what all we need to do to actually reach this November target to actually dig the first shovel and shovel and break ground. Um, we need everyone's support here. If you can see the fundraising, right? Um, this is not a fundraiser, so don't worry. Um, but I do want to just highlight the fact that we always are looking for support and encouraging everyone to reach out to their networks, professional and personal, to help really drive the Vision 99 project forward. Um, the other thing I just wanted to mention is since we're very early on in the planning and programming phase, 
we really don't know, like I mentioned earlier, whether we're going to start with one building or three buildings. We really don't know if a basketball court is the first thing we build or a gazebo, right? These are all the kinds of things that we really are going to start prioritizing and building a plan around how we're going to attack it and how we're going to tackle each one of those things. All that to be said, um, we don't have a concrete number just yet because, again, we are just starting the bidding process with engineering firms and architectural firms. Um, so I don't have a clear number today to share with you. Um, I think if you guys recall back in Ramadan during Eid, we did have the, the fundraising target to actually purchase the land. So I do want to say thank you to everyone for contributing and helping us to reach that goal. Um, inshallah, very soon we will be announcing what that next goal is and what that next target is. And if anybody has gone to Home Depot recently and tried to buy um, some plywood, you know the cost of lumber and materials has just gone up through, up, up through the roof. Um, all that to be said, we need to really think about are we going to build it out of wood or steel or concrete or what, right? There's all the types of things that we need to, to solve for. All right, so now this is the fun part. Um, what I'm looking for is if anyone would like to provide any kind of feedback on just the plan itself, um, feel free to reach out even on the chat window if you have any thoughts. Um, now's the time to do it. It's not the only time to do it. But I would like to encourage, and I think the next slide, yes, talks about uh, refining that master plan based on the feedback that I hear today and throughout the next several weeks. Um, and then we want to define what phase one really looks like. I think I mentioned that we're going to take this very slow and methodically. Uh, we want to make sure we look at what does phase one include. And that's where I need everyone's help to really help us understand what is it that you all look for in a masjid. Um, and what can we do to help support and sustain that Vision 99. Um, and then you can also see some of the boring things like we do have to select a construction firm and we do need to um, complete the design phase. I think the design, honestly, I, I'm just kidding. It, it's not boring, it's really exciting. If you guys have been involved in a bunch of being built anywhere in the country or anywhere in the world for that matter, that's what really gets people motivated and really excited to see the, the minarets going up, the domes going up, the colors on the walls. Those are the very, very nuanced things that some people may not have a strong opinion on, but others may feel like they want to you know, chime in and help out where they can. So again, that's where I'm looking for community feedback and involvement. Um, and I think the very next slide talks about questions and answers. So what questions can I answer? Yes. Uh, oh, okay. Could you please tell me how much would cost the first, the first phase of the construction? Do you have an idea? Yeah. So the question that the brother asked was a rough idea of the cost of phase one. Is that correct? Yeah. So at this point, what we are just basing it off of just pure square footage. We're not again looking at the building materials and how much uh, the difference is between grade A granite versus grade B and so on and so forth. The point is that we're targeting right around eight to nine million dollars, um, with a little bit of a buffer there. There may be opportunity to spend a little bit more if we want to get some better materials. Obviously, if we want to do things like solar panels and um, electric car charging stations, those cost a little bit more. So those are all the the variables that we need to solve for. But right now, we're, we're targeting that eight to nine million, and inshallah, once we have a more concrete plan. And we've actually got construction firms that are bidding on the project. We'll have a little bit more of an understanding of what it's going to cost to get us from uh, groundbreaking to ribbon cutting. I guess first question is what, what number are we looking at? I'm oh, sorry? Per square footage. The, the question was how much per square foot are we looking at? Um, I do not remember. Do you remember off the top of your head what we were using from a budgetary perspective? I remember, but I can't say. I'll tell you why. Because if you ask three different uh, construction companies, they're going to give you 100, 200, and 400. This is how, how dynamic the market is. My, if we are able to do a project, a commercial great project with steel buildings and a frame and that so forth, for 200,000 square foot, we're doing real well these days. Because the steel is so expensive, even not just the number, and labor is big company. So we will see how the conditions are by the time we start. Maybe conditions will become easier. Maybe 
some of the prices. They, you know, there's a lot of rumors that the prices are going to end of September or November. So we still have some time for design and fundraising anyway. The majority of this year is going to be spent on design and fundraising, really. So uh, we need to assess the exact cost when we get closer to the budget. Yeah, I, uh, I, I was just having a suggestion. How about doing this in phases? I mean, we just have a building and a parking lot and we start and then go and build it phase by phase. That way the cost can distribute over time. Is that something that uh, we have thought about? Yes, absolutely. Just to repeat the question in case anyone didn't hear it, the, the brother suggested have we thought through phasing it out, right? Starting with just a building with a few parking spots, correct? Yes, absolutely. So that is part of the conversation as the broader sub, uh, Vision 99 committee as well as the um, subcommittees are involved. Um, we are looking at what are our needs today. Um, obviously, this suffices for right now. Um, tomorrow, it may be a little bit different. So we are evaluating how we're going to stair step it, how we're going to phase it out. Um, do we really need, again, a full court basketball court on day one? Do we really need 155 parking spots on day one? Those are the kinds of conversations that we're having as a committee and trying to figure out which uh, phase we're going to start building, which building that helps. Yeah. I'm going to change the, the subject a little bit. I want you to stop worrying about, about building the ship. I want you to dream with us about what we're going to do with that ship, where we're going to go. This is a project for 99 years. Think about, dream about where you want it to go. Dream about what you want your grandkids to inherit from doing this. We'll, we'll figure, I'm not saying we don't want to share the, the, the process, or we don't want to share the cost estimates and things like that. But for today, for the next couple of months, let's really dream. What, what do we want the Roswell Community Mosque to be known for regionally, nationally, internationally. I mean, it's a great opportunity to, to now dream about where you want to take this and how. We'll worry about how to get there. If you, if you guys tell us we need a helicopter pad, you may say, you know, maybe in a, you know, we can make that a space too or something like that. But dream with us. Help us dream. Let us know what your dreams look like for your children and your grandchildren at this stage, and then we'll come back, and inshallah, with Allah's help, we'll figure out how to pay for it, and how to face it, and how to do everything like that. But let's dream first. Let's get a question, please. So here, it's your um, So just to repeat the question, the question was, what are we going to do with this facility? Are we planning on selling it or renting it? Um, we've talked about both options, and um, we are looking at again the real estate market is very hot right now. Um, in case you don't know, the building right next door has been for sale for quite a while. Um, so I think selling it may not be in our best interest immediately, but that is absolutely a way that we're thinking about fundraising and. You know, influx of cash right away if we do put it on the market and sell it. Um, we've also talked about you know leasing it, renting it. Um, who would be a good tenant? I know we don't have any concrete answers just yet, but we absolutely are talking through those um, exacts. Not only that, we also have to think about it's going to take a few months, maybe even a couple of years, to build the new mansion. Um, so we still need a place to call home. We still need a mansion to pray and have the and so on and so forth. Um, so we're not doing anything immediately today. If anything, we're going to continue to enhance, continue to support, and, and um, uh, keep this building operational. Is there another hand? Yeah. Okay, so the question was, what is the time frame for this entire project? Um, we have an initial uh, time frame. We're targeting November to have enough funding to just start phase one. Um, again, I don't know what phase one fully encompasses just yet, um, but from there we're getting initial estimates if we were to just, you know, stand up a building and a few parking spots, that could take upwards of 12 to 24 months. 
Um, if we have enough money and we grew it all out of the engineering firm and the construction firm, they'll put us at the top of the list and build it in 12 months, right? So all of these variables is what we're trying to figure out. Um, but if you were to ask me, I would love to try and uh, pull some of those timelines forward and build it sooner and you know have a new ground of ribbon cutting before next Ramadan. That's that's very aggressive and very optimistic. Um, but I think with Allah's help, we can obviously get across that finish line. Two questions from online. Will there be a full court basketball gym? The second one is also similar. Will there be an indoor sports facility, outdoor soccer field, walking trail, and any plans to add an athletic department to the masjid with a full-time school? Wow, that's a loaded, loaded question. <laughs> so just to repeat, are we going to have a full-time academic and athletics program? Are we going to have a full court basketball? And are we going to have an indoor basketball? Is that what I heard too? OK. So I don't want to say no. And I'm going to say inshallah, that's all I can say, right? Um, but in reality, these are all the programming and development efforts that we need everyone's help with. If somebody wants to sponsor and donate a million dollars to build an indoor gym, go for it, right? That's my view on it. Yeah, I, I do want to speak to that. Programming is all about that. We're not going to tell you what's going to be there. We want you to tell us in the best condition, you know, without any restraints, what you would like to see there. So please phrase your questions like, is there going to be there to but say, we would love to, to see that in our Vision 99. Uh, I have a lot of questions here. I don't know what's for it. Go, go ahead. Is there ahead. any committee about to study other Islamic centers in the nation or right. even other interfaith or yes. other faith centers yes. or already established or successful to yeah. take their templates? Excellent question. The question again for the online folks, have we studied and benchmarked other facilities um, Islamic or not, uh, religious facilities. Absolutely, that was uh, the Muhammad here was leading the benchmarking process, and it's ongoing. And through every phase, we're gonna calling on, on you know other masajid and churches. What have what have worked? What haven't worked? What was the challenges? What lessons they learned? We already interviewed six or seven masajid around the country that have recently finished construction and ask those questions and we're going to continue to connect with those uh, with those folks who complete uh, projects and services. Good question. Yes, sir. Yeah, is there an opportunity to expand beyond five acres? Uh, the reason I ask is I come from MCA, which is in San Francisco Bay Area, and the biggest challenge that the, that the community was facing was expansion. Uh, like, and five acres, I know it sounds much bigger compared to this mosque, yeah. but I can totally see five <laughs> acres becoming too, getting to be too small eventually. Join the game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hang on, the short answer is no. Honestly, at that location, there's no opportunities the around it. What was the question? Uh, the question was, is there an opportunity to expand beyond the five and a half acres? So this is why we're trying to master plan this so that we optimize what we get out of this property. And quite honestly, if we go beyond this size, we should have multiple campuses. So maybe the opportunity to have another campus elsewhere where you have more green space. But in Roswell, it's really, it was really hard enough to find five acres that are not developed. Yes, sir. Yeah, being a father of mostly girls and my wife, uh, I know she shared this as an uh, anchor. The sisters have the ability to have fitness that are sisters only, and perhaps the indoor pool that sisters can swim in that has the privacy that you can't give them an LA fitness or any other type of opportunity. Yeah. No, that's, a, that's an excellent question and point. Um, just to repeat, uh, in case the sisters didn't hear it, um, and anyone online didn't hear it, is really was there going to be any plans for an indoor pool or indoor facilities strictly for our Muslim uh, sisters and mothers? Um, the answer that I can provide to you today is that it's not currently in the plan. Uh, an indoor pool is not part of the plan. Uh, we do have a plan for kind of a, an outdoor exercise space, green space. Uh, we will have a walking path. Um, I do feel that as we keep getting these types of uh, questions and feedback from the community, I can already envision that there's going to be a program dedicated, you know, whether it's Saturday mornings or whatever day of the week, um, strictly for our, our sisters to come in and have a space of their own. And if you look at this map, there's nothing but trees all around it, right? 
And I think going back to the question that was asked earlier, we really can't expand beyond the green line, right? There's physical restrictions. But even within those confounds, confines, there's a lot of opportunity for privacy and inclusion for our, our, our sisters, our mothers, our kids that just want to be able to exercise. Um, but to answer your question directly, I don't think a pool has ever been uh, brought up. So, uh, just to add one point. So, in the programming, we actually we have been talking about how can we, sorry, in the, uh, I'm part of my name, Sarah, Sarah, my name is Muhammad uh, already. So, in the, in the committee, we have been talking about how we can serve our sisters also have their privacy. And so, that's part of, of course, of our vision that we will have something for our sisters. So the programming that we like your input will help us actually invite us where things we can do. So just to um, that. Can I just say something? I know it's ideal for us to have these special things in the new masjid, but we're not going to wait till then. We are in the process of trying to have a sister's fitness class right here and uh, try to get uh, sisters only swim time at a pool close by. So stay tuned that we'll be announcing that. <laughs> I just want to take the opportunity to no, let people great. know. That's awesome. I didn't even know that. Yeah, it's still in the works. So inshallah, by the end of uh, beginning of July, we'll announce it. Can you repeat that? Oh, so just to repeat what Sister Lumna just said, that there's already talks about having sister-specific uh, workout in this facility as well as a local pool, if pool I heard you correctly. For sister's time. For sister's time only, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I'm just curious, what's the... Um, overall year-over-year year growth in the membership like what's percentage the percentage wise what's the year-over-year year growth in the membership like what's the current membership and how does it grow is it 30 percent increase every year yeah that's a great question the question was how big and how fast are we growing i guess yeah just in terms of number of members yeah um i don't know that specifically off the top of my head do you have them yeah <laughs> don't have a specific number but i can tell you this um Tens of families that move in every year. Unfortunately, because of our limitation and because of our constraints, because of our parking that green space, there's only 300 families that can be accommodated at one time regardless. So unfortunately, if you gain some, we're getting we're having to lose some or, or be creative on how to accommodate people. And, and hence, you know, that's really why the justification for this time to to be able to grow so that we can track that, we can measure that. And, and uh, the other thing I want to mention about growth of membership, the two topics that were presented today are not independent. The, the leadership team that's coming in, uh, and, and this is our board, our, our board has updated the, the strategic plan already this year, and we're going to be recruiting for what we're going to be in the future, not for what we are now. So the, the capacity of the leadership team to grow and, and the community and to, to support a uh, larger community needs to be taken into consideration for the recruitment process. Yeah, so the question was, what was the thought process behind the three building footprint, right? Um, so we based it, based it basically on our current footprint, right? We've got the masala, the prayer space, we've got kind of this multi-purpose space, and then we've got classrooms, and then we have a few offices. So kind of building on that concept, what is, again, the day-to-day -day usage? What is the more special event usage? And what is kind of the weekly usage? And so based on that, we, again, came up with what we call the footprints of those three buildings. Um, again, it goes all the way back to the planning and programming, how we actually use those uh, facilities as part of the conversation. Um, but we know we need um, additional classrooms. We're pretty much bursting at the seams in every one of our classrooms today. Um, we know we need more office space. Uh, Brother Maher shares it very graciously, graciously with others. Um, and the point that I'm trying to make is that we just need to uh, build upon that. We're not trying to do anything um, radical or anything new. Uh, we did talk about a more elaborate you know, mommy's space. Uh, we did talk about having the women and the men space equal. Uh, we did talk about, you know, again, the masala is, again, the five daily prayers. You know, let's keep it just for that. Um, and then let's have a place for kids to play so that they aren't, you know, getting involved in wires and things like that.
So um, the theme of, of three buildings is based on the fact that we, from practice and from knowing what you need, they need to have their own space that's designed for them. And it feels like this is a youth building. And it has the activity space, the social space, the education space that caters to their needs. And so that's a very unique space. And that's why it's really good to have um, a separate building. It can be connected, yet it is separate. It feels like it's, it's, it has a different identity. The masjid is that, in a, in a way, it's the same way. A lot of people are very protective of the masjid. They want the white space. They want the sanctuary, the place of, of ibadah and so forth. So it has to have the open identity. And inshallah, and, you know, with the new leadership, the leadership team coming on board and with uh, uh, our religious leaders uh, uh, taking charge of our programs, we want to build more and more adult education classes, seminars. Uh, we discovered with the COVID that we have a huge opportunity to reach many more people if we had a studio, really a professional studio to reach to people. So these kind of spaces are classrooms, administration, uh, seminars and things like that also constitute the there are some suggestions online. In regard to the, in regard to the uh, job description, did you advertise about it on national level or regional level? What, what kind of level do you think? Sorry, I didn't hear the question. Oh, uh, the question is, uh, how did we advertise the job descriptions? So uh, we did send it out uh, publicly, but we also uh, activated our own um, circle of uh, very connected people that, that know uh, about RCM, and we encouraged all those people to uh, <laughs> Kids have found a microphone on the member. If you're wondering what happened. Future. Yes. Uh, so yes. So we we follow every single way that we can to get the job description out, including uh, advertising nationally, but also uh, tapping into our uh, circle of, uh, of friends that, that know about us. Yeah. What is the base salary for this for each one? Each person. The base salary is going to be dependent on the, the, amount, the amount of experience that the people bring. So uh, we're going to have a base salary. We're also, inshallah, going to have uh, benefits that go along with that so that we can attract the right people. And it's really going to depend on, uh, it's going to be competitive. I'd rather not, not go into the details right now, but it's going to be competitive to where we can attract the right talent of folks that can take us to the next level. Uh, alaikum, brother. Um, the, the really important thing, the principle in terms of the salary, is we want our leaders not to have to struggle to meet to be pay their bills. We want them to live in the same means of the area that we live in and, and, and be comfortable. Number one. So that's that's uh, one thing. Uh, the other thing in terms of advertising, I mean, we've done this a few times before, and the most effective thing, way to recruit the, the best people is always networking. Uh, honestly, all of us, you know, we've seen in Islamic websites and magazines, we see advertisements for Islam all the time. But do, do they work? I mean, you know, honestly, the, the, the networking and, and working with the scholars around the country is the best way to identify the talent around the country. So you, you don't, we don't have to do much other than activate those networks. And the proof of that, uh, that alhamdulillah it worked well, that all the, almost all the candidates that applied to the imam job were from other states, from other states. So the word got out, whether we have a lot of followers on our email or whether the scholars that we, we notified, you know, activated their, their networks. Uh, whatever happened, alhamdulillah, we have actually folks from California, from Illinois, and from uh, the Northeast applying to RCM jobs. 
uh, some are very high caliber people, which is alhamdulillah that speaks a lot about uh, people who want to come to Arsingham. And, and the first question they will ask is what Rasim just mentioned, that are you going to offer benefits? Uh, you know, that's one of the, the most common questions because unfortunately, many institutions have not treated the imams and or compensated them more almost or more. Didn't, uh, offer benefits. So inshallah, we, we totally believe in, in changing that and making sure that they're well compensated and, and they, they do have benefits. What do you do to the from California being the US for 47 years? Uh, moved to Georgia recently. Uh, I have one from Kapala Majlis in my lifetime and have always seen a shortfall because the biggest problem is generating income and based on my experience I think you guys with the board and the subcommittee should seriously think about simultaneously generating income because you are going from a small project to a five times bigger project you have to come up with a budget how much that's going to cost to run the center and we always, I don't know there's somehow there's a weakness uh, where most of the budget is all the time after donation because they don't have enough money to run the center. <laughs> Biggest thing you can see is that when you look at the churches and the synagogues, they are richer than most of the companies in America. And what they have done is that they created a big crust of money which generates hundreds of thousands of dollars of income to run those, those institutions. I think the board should seriously consider not selling this facility because we need the income. How are you going to run that big center? The community is not going to grow five times. You are thinking of building a five times bigger center. So please think about that very seriously. Yeah. There are only a few merchants in the United States who have done that. And if you want, you can talk to some of them. And they have established what they call a lock. Yeah. It's a trust which people donate to it and that trust only income is used, not the principal. Yeah. The principal is invested to so generate income yeah. to run the center. So I would highly recommend somebody in your group yeah. to do more research and think about that process. Yeah, no, that's that's a very valid point and, and I really appreciate that perspective. Um, I don't think I can repeat everything you just said to anyone who didn't hear it other than um, the message I'm hearing is that we, we as a board and we as a committee really have a, an obligation to understand and recognize how we can continue to not only raise funds organically, but to sustain our current operations and as we grow. Um, the good news, and alhamdulillah, I think we announced this last year, uh, we do have a walk. Uh, we do have some money set aside for investments and things like that. It's um, it's not growing to the point where it's hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, of income, but that is on the uh, horizon. Um, again, real estate investments, things like that. All of these things are being discussed, um, and our board has uh, already taken the amount of money that was contributed to the work and have already started to put that to work for us. So I'm holding a lot on that front, um, but I would love to you know, invite you to you know, chat with us a little bit more specifically if you have experience in this. Um, and we'll be more than happy to take. Uh, I'm going to be retired. Perfect. I can help in such a way. Yeah. Thank you. 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 If there's any more questions, happy to answer them offline. Are there any more questions online? No, they're just suggestions, and I'll let, uh, let them know we'll add it to our list of suggestions. Okay, perfect. Any other questions that I can address today, right now? Again, this is not your only time to, to approach us, obviously. I uh, just wanted to make sure that I'm respectful of everyone's time, and also, if there's any food outside, I think it might have gotten cold. But any other thoughts or questions I can address? Okay. Um, with that, I believe. Uh, sure. The email address again is vision99 uh, at roswellmasjid.org. Um, again, vision99. Uh, you can also find that on our website. Um, yep, it's right there on the bottom of the screen. Um, feel free to continue to send your suggestions, your questions. Again, if you want to volunteer on any of these subcommittees or if you just want to provide uh, your consultative approach, uh, we are more than happy and welcome all of those comments. 
Um, and I believe that is, is that correct? Awesome. So, Jazakallah Khair for all of you guys for listening to us and for all your questions and feedback. And inshallah, we will. Um, one hour before Marjor, so please help yourself to the refreshments and the potluck outside.